welcome to our home. We're Ellen and Judith Rayner, and it's almost time for Westside to God and Methodist Church's service today. We're conducting the service online with, with our, our iPads and, and phones, phones, so we, we welcome you to, and, and, and hope that you participate and enjoy the service. to play this game with dots it's um <clears throat> if you have any kind of paper it could be scrap paper it could be a journal you can connect dots and make little boxes I like to play that game and I like to journal I like to draw pictures in my journal well today I'm gonna be outside the church ready to hand out some more activity packs for our brand new beginning this week program for Wednesday evenings what we've been calling Club 252 we are growing in faith together and what I'm going to hand out to people today are these great journals that our friends Mindy and Taraline found and they have dots and so you can make all sorts of um, games and you can write and you can draw and they have these really great pens the reason we're giving you these journals is that we are going to be drawing and praying together as we learn about what it means to have enough. And as we think about all the ways God has been so good to us and all the ways God is with us in the hard times and the good times. And so we're going to be looking at that idea as a whole church this month of September. And these journals and these really nice gel pens are a way that you can be thinking and praying and drawing as we learn together. Thanks for coming. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Actually, godliness is a great source of profit when it is combined with being happy with what you already have. 
We didn't bring anything into this world, so we can't take anything out of it. We'll be happy with food and clothing, but people who are trying to get rich fall into temptation. They are trapped by many stupid and harmful passions that plunge people into ruin and destruction. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some have wandered away from the faith and have impaled themselves with a lot of pain because they are made of money, They're, they have made money their goal. But as for you, man of God, run away from all these things. Instead, pursue righteousness, holy living, faithfulness, love, endurance, and gentleness. Compete in the good fight of faith. Grab hold of eternal life. You were called to it, and you, and you made a good confession of it in the presence of many witnesses. I command you in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and Christ Jesus, who made the good confession when testifying before Pontinuous Spirit. <laughs> Obey this order without fault or failure until the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. The timing of this appearance is revealed by God alone, who is blessed and only master, and the King of kings and Lord of lords. He alone has immortality and lives in light that no other can come near. No human being has ever seen or is able to see him. Honor and eternal power belong to him. Amen. Tell people who are rich at this time not to become egotistical and not place their hope on their finances, which are uncertain. Instead, they need to hope in God, who richly provides everything for our enjoyment. Tell them to do, a good, to do good and be rich in good things they do, to be generous and share with others. When they do these things, they will save a treasure for themselves that is a good foundation for the future. That way, they can take hold of what is truly life. Let's pray. Come Holy Spirit and inspire our hearts. If you are with us, then nothing else matters. And if you are not with us, then nothing else matters. May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be wholly pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today, we are launching a new worship series called Enough. It's based on Reverend Adam Hamilton's book by the same name. In this season of the pandemic, our lives have been scrambled. We feel stripped of control. Life has become complicated and has lost a bit of its luster. And there seem to be more days in the month than we have money for. This series was selected for these reasons and more because of its overarching theme, finding joy in simplicity and generosity. Over the next several weeks, we will explore what the Bible has to offer us in terms of wisdom regarding our finances, how we can cultivate contentment in our lives, and how we can live lives that are defined by generosity. Our focus today is on how God's vision of financial management brings joy that the American dream can never bring. What is the American dream, anyway? There are lofty dreams that precede and ex seed our personal lifetimes. We might look at the founding father's declaration for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, or those magnificent, magnificent words on the base of Lady Liberty who lifts her lamp be, beside the golden door, which reads, send me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be breathe free the wretched refuse of your teeming shores send these the homeless tempest tossed to me or perhaps it's martin martin luther king jr's i have a dream speech given 67 years ago on the steps of the lincoln memorial 
calling for civil and economic rights and an end to racism. These are the dreams that we hope for, but generations come and go, and the dreams seem to be just beyond our reach. Perhaps they are more the dreams of our higher angels. For most of us, the American dream has to do with a desire for achieving success and satisfying that desire for material possessions. It's a desire to acquire. It's the desire to pursue more than what we have, to gain more than what we have, and to create an image of success. We tend to measure our success by how much stuff we have and often against our neighbors. In truth, the American dream has become much more individualistic and materialistic. What characterizes the greatest hopes, desires, and dreams of most Americans is owning our own home, retiring comfortably, being able to defend for or defend and to fend for ourselves. And while there is nothing wrong with these things, they have become our primary focus. The love of money and the things money can buy is the primary or secondary motive behind most of what Americans do. We want to consume and acquire and, and buy our way to happiness and we want it now. The pursuit of happiness more and more looks like the pursuit of material pleasure. The ma American dream has become an American nightmare, owing to two distinct yet related illnesses that affect us both socially and spiritually. Now, I realize that in the middle of a pandemic, the last thing you need to hear about are more viruses and illnesses, but there are two afflictions that fuel this American nightmare. The first one is affluenza. Affluenza was described in a PBS special several, several years ago as the bloated, sluggish, and unfulfilled feeling that results from efforts to keep up with the Joneses. An epidemic of stress, overwork, waste, and indebtedness caused by pursuit of the American dream. Affluenza was also defined as an unstable addiction to economic growth. Affluenza is the constant need for more and bigger and better stuff, as well as the effect that this need has on us. It is the desire to acquire, and most of us have been infected by this virus to one degree or another. We see this in real estate, where the average American home went from 1,660 square feet back in 1973 to 2,700 square feet in 2016, and from a one-car garage to a three-car garage standard. And the alarming thing is that that still isn't enough space to hold all of our stuff. Today, there is an estimated 2.3 billion square feet of self storage space in America. Have you ever found yourself wondering how you accumulated so many things? I feel this way every time we move and sometimes in between. Affluenza, if not treated timely, can make us susceptible to credit-itis. Credit-itis is another illness that is brought on by the opportunity to buy now and pay later, and it feeds on our desire for instant gratification. As I 
As I, when I was a child, I, I remember Wimpy from the Popeye cartoons. You remember Wimpy, who was famous for saying, I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. <laughs> but in those days, you waited until it was paid for before you got it. Trying to keep up with five growing kids with an unstable income, my mother was a big bargain shopper. There was a store near our small town in upstate New York called Philadelphia Sales, where she would take all of us kids a couple times a year to fill in those gaps in between the hand-me-downs. She'd shop and holding up a piece of article to each one of us, kind of, you know, sizing us up for a growth factor in there. And then she would take her carefully loaded shopping cart to the layaway section where it would be safely stored until she completed her monthly payments. Do you remember Layaway? Well, some of our younger worshipers may not know about Layaway, but that was an interesting practice, not getting something until it was paid for. But then credit cards were introduced, and for many of us, it was like stepping into Candyland. It's been researched that the average sale costs around 125% more if we use a credit card than if we pay cash for it. But we go for it anyway because it doesn't feel real when we use plastic instead of cash. And credititis is not limited to purchases made with credit cards. It extends to car loans and mortgages and other loans as well. The life of the average car loan and home mortgage continues to increase while the average American savings rate continues to decrease. 30 years ago, the average credit card debt in America was around $3,000, which was staggering at the time. Today, the average household credit card debt is nearly $17,000. This is an alarming trend. But our economy today is built on this concept of credititis. We no longer need to wait until something is paid off. We no longer need to wait until we can enjoy it. And unfortunately, credititis has exploited our lack of self-discipline and has allowed us to feed our affluenza wreaking havoc with our personal and national finances. Maybe some of you today that are, are listening thinking, I don't have either one of those illnesses. I keep my car past the time it's paid off. I have a reasonable length of time on my mortgage where my equity continues to build. I, I pay off all of my credit card balances each month, and that's great. You should be congratulated. But have you ever looked at your income at the end of the month or at the end of the year and wondered, where did it all go? If you're like me, you might struggle with that. And you might wonder from time to time, what do I have to show for it? This struggle, along with our desire to acquire, is called sin, and it reflects a much deeper problem within. I'm not saying that it's wrong to have things, nor am I saying it's wrong to have wealth. As Paul writes in his letter to Timothy, it is the love of money that gets us into trouble. So essentially, it is about our focus in life. Affluenza and credititis indicate that there are spiritual issues at play here. You see, our souls were created in the image of God, but they have become distorted. We were meant to desire God, but we have turned that desire into possessions. We were meant to find our security in God, but we find it in amassing wealth. 
We were meant to love people, but instead we compete with them. We were meant to enjoy the simple pleasures of life, but we busy ourselves with pursuing money and pursuing things. We were meant to be generous and to share with those in need, but we selfishly hoard our resources for ourselves. Sadly, we all have an inclination toward sin. Temptations abound. Sinning is not just about stealing or lying or, or having an affair for that matter. For some of us, sin comes about when we long for things that others have. This is called envy. For others, sin comes about when we borrow against our futures to satisfy our present desires for things that we don't really need. This is called greed. And for many of us, sin comes about when we fail to experience joy in simplicity and generosity. While this proclamation today has ushered in a bit of a dark cloud, it is so very important to hear the silver lining of good news. Jesus said the thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life. Indeed, so that they could have life to the fullest. This is God's will for us, my friends that we would experience the fullness of life, not necessarily, the full, not necessarily the fullness of things. What does the fullness of life look like for you? Is it contentment? Is it joy? This is God's will for us. It's, it's not about denying the good creation that God provides for our enjoyment because God wants us to do that but it's also about sharing in a joyful feasting with all persons. In verse 11 of our Timothy passage, Paul writes, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. He's telling us that it all begins with heart work, heart work, because we need a heart change. Although we received a changed heart when we accept Christ, in a sense, we need a heart change every morning. Every morning we should get down on our knees and say, Lord, help me to be the person you want me to be today. Take away the desires that shouldn't be there and help me to be single-minded in my focus and pursuit of you. As we say this prayer and act in it, act on it, God comes and cleanses us from the inside out, purifying and changing our hearts. And here's the thing, it's always up to us to ask. Christ works in us as we seek first his kingdom and strive to do his will. As we do this, we begin to get a sense of a higher calling, a calling to simplicity and faithfulness and generosity. We begin to look at ways we can make a difference with our time and our talents and our resources. By pursuing good financial practices, we free ourselves from debt so that we are able to be mission in mission work to the world. A key part of finding financial and spiritual freedom is found in simplicity and in exercising restraint. With the help of God, we can simplify our lives and silence the voices constantly telling us that we need more. We can live counterculturally by living below, not above our means. We can build into our budgets the money to buy cash, to buy with cash instead of with credit. And we can build into our budgets 
what we need to live generously and faithfully. By now, every West Heights household should have received a mailing from the church that talks about this service with an invitation to be part of a small group study. There are many studies beginning this week. One started last week. My study, there was a, um, a, a, an error in the, in the printed time. I actually start my study this Thursday. If you are, are not currently part of the West Heights family, but you'd like to be a part of this broader discussion throughout the month of September, please check out our website at www.westheightsumc.org and follow the link for the Enough Worship series. I invite all of us to join together each week as we explore how having our focus on Christ truly is enough. And now I invite you, if you would, just to take your hands and place them on your lap, wherever, wherever you're sitting, to place them on your lap and extend your, your hands so your palms are upright there on your lap. And I invite you to say this prayer with me, repeating every phrase. Change my heart, O oh God. Clean me inside out. Make me new. Heal my desires. Help me to hold my possessions loosely. Help me to love you. Teach me simplicity. Teach me generosity and help me have joy. I offer my life to you and we pray in Jesus name as he taught us to pray. Thank you for your generous financial support of the work, the witness, the mission of West Heights United Methodist Church. We welcome your gifts, and you can find more information about that in the offertory slide. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, bless our gifts of time, talent, service, witness, and mission. Thank you for this day. Thank you for all the ways you provide enough for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. 
we are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I present to you Adrian Mariah Tate Miller for confirmation and membership into this faith community. Adrian, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world, Adrian? I do. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? I do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this person, Adrian, now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Adrian with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I in, believe in God the Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Adrian, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Adrian Mariah Tate Miller, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Adrian, as a member of Christ's Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? I will. As a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. Members of the household of God, I commend Adrian to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, 
and our service and our witness, that, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Adrian, the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, may this same God establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Welcome. Amen. We're so glad you're here. Amen. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my will and make thine it shall be no longer mine take my heart it is thine own it shall be thy royal throne take my love my lord i pour at thy feet Take myself and I will be ever on thee all for thee. share throughout this worship series and the words are on your monitors invite you to join with me Lord help me to be grateful for what I have and to remember that I don't need most of what I want joy is found in simplicity and generosity go and let that be our prayer this week Amen. Mm -hmm. 